Good afternoon. Uh, as I was introduced today, I'm going to tell you my vision about audition. It's but before we start, um, I used to work for a while in the industry, and I was my main challenge, my main task was to make people happy while listening to their very fancy uh, multi-channel sound systems in luxury cars, maybe. And after a while, I discovered the main problem there, the main uh, task, was to uh, spot their attention. Where are they listening to while I'm doing my best to make this beautiful sound come out? But are they listening to me or uh, where, are, where the attention is going? So um, eventually I decided to uh, start working on this, start doing my research on this theme from the engineering point of view, but the, the cognitive, the, perspect, the perception point of view, it's way bigger than what I expected since the very beginning. So um, that's the main topic today. Um, this guy um, is a relaxed one. He is enjoying his work, looks like it, and um, is doing something which is um, easy according to his face, but maybe looking more detail, uh, is actually doing something very complex. He is multitasking, it's indeed multitasking. He is and he is listening and watching to several streams of audio and video, so he's actually able, we suppose he is, he's, he's paid for doing this, uh, to select and pick whatever he wants from time to time without great effort and no major stress. So he's a complex machine at the end of the story. Um, an experiment, before we start again. Um, just imagine you just walk outside and, uh, and then you listen to something. This is what usually um, reaches you in one second of sound traveling to you when you walk outside. So it's, the scene is quite crowded. Uh, you are listening to everything. And that's real. That's a recording down the street. So your ears are usually helping you out a lot. But if you look at this, it's even better, of course. It does make much, much more sense. If you walk around and you look at something, you can improve your experience. You, you're used to this. You're a human. You usually look and listen. At least the two main senses for the lucky ones of us are working fine. They're collaborating. Audition is helping bring into us far events which we don't have a clue about. We don't see what's happening, but we know that something is coming. So Audition is providing a nice feedback to vision so we are more reactive at the end of the story. It's a very animal level uh, mechanism. And we don't pay attention to that. We are used to do this all time, all day, 24 hours per day. Even when we sleep, we do that. So uh, before we go back again, I want you to give an idea of what's a very classic. It's a, the cocktail party problem is a classic of engineering, audio engineering, cognitive science today. and. Uh, Actually, this guy, he had a problem at the cocktail party, uh, but it's not actually the, the cut an engineer wants to, to make from the, from the topic. So uh, in the 50s, um, Mr. Cherry at MIT, he defined what the cocktail party problem was from the engineering perspective. And this we experience today, even here at the venue. Um, there is a lot of noise, there is a bubble noise, and you're listening to everything you can select, but the Audrey Hepburn is clearly getting his attention in what, and he wants to do it. Uh, he has several cues besides the beauty, and, but we can tell from human to human that he is doing, he's listening to her, but he's processing everything else at the meantime. So his attention is focusing, but he can decide most of the times what to do. Um, so definition was, the challenge was to make machines learn and behave as close as possible to humans while processing audio information. So this was the main challenge he was embarking at that time. But if it was a machine, the poor guy, uh, it would have been much more puzzled. Um, he needed to have rules and cues to decide 
uh, which way to go uh, besides taste uh, for, for Audrey Hepburn. Uh, so back to us. Mm, it has been quite a while since we, we used to uh, video, to screen, TV, call it a, whatever you want. Uh, it's over a century. In the 20s, we were used to radio and television separated. Then they merged together in TV with audio, and then color came up. And then today, we can enjoy 3D vision, uh, maybe not as relaxed as in, in a lounge, but it's there, and, and smart TV sets where you can explore and do very amazing things. But in the meantime, audio technology and multi-channel and home theaters are evolved a lot. So technology is it's pushing a lot, but there is a the fact is that these two technology streams are not actually crossing together, not working jointly, intimately, to deliver a real, uh, more natural sound experience. They're working on their technologies, but they're not actually working at the same gradient, at the same pace, uh, from the perception point of view, at least. So let's get to the browsing experience. We have a very nice example over here, very interesting and classic today uh, website where people are spending a lot of time uh, looking for information. Uh, we did speak about internet and browsing several times today. It's a, it's a very common task we perform daily, two or three hours per day, depends on your job, on your entertainment attitude. But we are there all the time. If we think back well, what we've been doing so far, um, we've been talking about perception. We've been talking about two main senses, audition and vision, and it was natural to do the little experiment and to feel better when vision was enabled. So uh, why are we tied to such a uh, flat surface, although very rich in information, but silent, 99.9% .9 of the times? It's silent until you decide to select something which speaks to you. But that's not natural anymore. We are not used to, as humans, to process information as in this way. But that's the way it is today. So web has evolved uh, with no sound, basically. Although information is packed, and we, it tries to pop up in several ways, like flashing and bright colors and moving things, but it's all visual. So uh, uh, my idea is that it's time to rethink, application-wise, uh, the way we propose contents today on the web interface, in, the, in this case, in this very specific case. Uh, let's call it augmented display. It's not a completely new idea, but in the case of browsing, in the case of a very action you perform every day, uh, and it's part of your intimate. You do it on the mobile, you do on work, you do it in in, at home. The kids do it, all these do it, everyone does. So that display, that screen, which may be bigger, uh, it's silent today. So we need to get to close the feedback loop. We need to go back to nature. Uh, we need to go to relax a little bit. We Sometimes when you are passing two, three time, two, three hours of time looking for information on the web. At the end, even if you've been sitting in a nice lounge in your office very silently, silently, you are tired as hell at the end because you are concentrated so much trying to get the most of the experience with your eyes that it's uh, your, I am at least at the end of the story. <laughs> so it would be nice to, to enter a word which is more natural, which reduces our cognitive load while surfing, while looking for information. It's a little bit like going from walking on a monocycle, which is hard, but we learn to do it. We've been trained to do this since web was there. We're going on a monocycle, but we could, we could go on a running bicycle. Uh, it's not a four-wheel drive SUV where you're relaxed and you climb and you go everywhere, but at least the two senses are much, much better than one. And they are the main ones. They help each other a lot. So that's the idea. And uh, 
the possibility to reduce the reaction time while this looking for information is the core idea behind this research. Um, reaction time, uh, we are not um, aware that we are into a performance task while we are looking for information on website, but in fact we are. We are looking for information, the one we want, um, and we don't want to waste time. We don't want to surf around and scroll with our eyes and maybe being not aware that something is uh, eventually coming up new somewhere in that domain. Uh, these people are working, the people who work in this domain, in these research areas, uh, they are all over the world, they are doing great jobs since some years. They are working to sonify, to work on, to understand how sound can bring information to us uh, from very different perspectives. So information retrieval, literary research, and sonification, they're all working, trying to improve our understanding on how brain is processing our auditory world, auditory world of, around, around us. Um, this could be very nicely applied to the way we spend our time watching it and looking for information in, in, on the web. So that's, that's it. How we do it? Um, we, we start from a primitive level. We want to embed uh, priming cues. What's a priming cue? Priming cue is it's a, it's a small sound. It's the most invisible possible sound. You wouldn't even try to, uh, you wouldn't even get it. Maybe that's the goal. Uh, so it's an invisible sound which can grab your attention or at least guide your attention uh, towards an event. An event could be a, a new information coming up, something which can be interesting to you. So the idea is to have several priming cues um, promoting the information which is moving and coming up on the environment, on the virtual environment you are looking at. Uh, this helps a lot while uh, looking for something. It, the reaction time, as I said, can be cut, and this is well known, um, up to 50% uh, if we add one more cue, one more sense to our perception. So why don't we do it? Um, of course, priming cues can be specialized, can have different spectral envelopes to, to balance each other, not to play very loud things, which is a very obvious bad solution. And of course, we can embark an even difficult, more difficult task while working on different semantic levels, levels which means um, simply uh, what kind of information is the sound carrying, which association has with the information, with the visual object, with the uh, event which is promoting. So all these two techniques are helping our brain relaxing from the challenging visual task by providing handles to pull. So we are able, pretty much as we walk outside, to understand looking and, and listening to something, what's happening around us? Uh, what do I decide to pay attention to? It's just giving us hints. We don't want to uh, guide you along a path that's marketing. Uh, we want to provide a, a richer, more realistic environment for a task which has become, which has become very tangible in our daily experience. It's, it's a big chunk of our time. So we need to improve it. We need to be more relaxed. We need to have less fatigue, to experience less fatigue while doing this. And in car safety or visual reality, hearing aids, and serious games applied to, let's say, medical applications like attention deficit and forensic audio, all these other domains um, could greatly benefit of the results stemming out from, from such a research. Because understanding how audition uh, can contribute to, uh, to our daily experience, it's, it's a great field and, and it's everywhere. We have a lot of fields where this, it's not been studied yet. So that's, thank you.